Today I'll be talking about episodes 74 through 76 of Legend of Junhuan. So the Emperor has given Junhuan the poison and her instructions to kill Guo Wang. Giving her no chance to try and hatch a plan, Junhuan is delivered directly from the Emperor to Guo Wang with the most suspicious looking wine bottle ever. There's no way to really convey the emotion in this scene in a recap, so I won't even try. They reminisce on their past, lament their present, and express their love for each other. Junhuan pours them both cups of wine, but she presses down on a green gem before pouring his glass, and a red gem before pouring her own. Before they drink, Guang distracts her with the embroidery on the window. When she sits down again, they drink. Guang asks to hold her one last time, and then he starts spitting blood. Junhuan is shocked. She'd actually planned on drinking the poison herself, but Guang caught on. He switched the cups when she went to the window, knowing that she would try to kill herself rather than kill him. This is the saddest scene in the history of drama. His last words are that in his heart, she's always been his one and only wife, and just like that, he dies. Junhuan exits the room. The guards outside tell her that if anyone but her came out, they had orders to kill them. So in a way, it's a good thing Guo Wang was the one who ended up drinking the poisoned wine. Since she was the one who came out, he has an order to read. It states that the Empress is not fit to rule and that Junhuan will take over her position, becoming the Empress in all but title. Then Huanbi arrives to see her husband. I know you're in shock, but you could have given her a little bit of a warning. Junhuan passes out and ends up injuring her knee. Guang is given a nice funeral, the official story being that his death was an accident. The injured Junhuan is unable to attend and cries to herself in her room. The emperor is still being petty and though the funeral is allowed to take place in the palace, he decrees that no one is to cry loudly, including his son. Huan Bi can't take it in the end. She smashes her head into his casket and kills herself, making Yuan Cha officially an orphan. You might be wondering, how could I possibly turn this into another I hate Huan Bi rant? She did this out of love, right? I don't think so. I think she just wasn't about that single mom life. Jin Huan wants to know why the emperor had such a change of heart. After allowing Guo Wang to live at the border for so long, why did he suddenly order him to return to the capital? Su Sheng tells her that it was because of some letters. He shows her the letters written from Huan Bi to Guo Wang at the border. Every single letter ended with those four words. Gu Wang had clearly asked Huan Bi about Jun Huan in every letter. To me, this scene has always been the number one illustration of just how much he loved her. Unfortunately, the Emperor had a spy steal some of the letters and after seeing them decided Gu Wang was still in love with Jun Huan and would never give up. That, combined with his lingering jealousy and suspicion of Gu Wang, is what led to his death. Things settle down, and while the Emperor and Junhuan no longer have even a pretend romantic relationship, Junhuan remains the de facto Empress and rules over the harem, while the Empress remains under house arrest. The head doctor comes to report to Junhuan that Lan Yi has been requesting some strange drugs and plants that could be harmful depending on how they're used. We see Lan Yi putting some incense together and being affectionate with the Emperor in a way that is so far out of character for her that it must be for a reason. This is Meizhuang all over again. The Emperor is never suspicious of the right people. After ignoring and hating you for years, you think Lan Yi just suddenly fell in love with your smile or... No matter what Lan Yi requests, and even as the doctor reports that the Emperor is getting weaker, Jin Huan tells the doctor, <laughs> Officials in the court start pushing again for the Emperor to name a crown prince. He's well into middle age at this point and could keel over at any minute. The good news for Junhuan is that the two standouts, 4th Prince and 6th Prince, are both her sons. 5th Prince is never shown in this drama, but he's reportedly terrible and no one wants him as a ruler. There are, however, some officials that worry that Junhuan is too crafty and can't be trusted with too much power. Since the only two options for the next emperor are both her sons, some outright say that she should be killed so she doesn't become the next Empress Dowager. When they meet, Junhuan tells the Emperor that she wants 4th Prince to be the Crown Prince even though he's not her biological son. This surprises a lot of the officials and even the Emperor because while Junhuan is legally the 4th Prince's mother, she didn't raise him. It would be natural for her to have a preference for her biological son. Not to mention, if 6th Prince took the throne, as young as he is, Junhuan would have all the power until he came of age. 
Eventually, the Emperor agrees to go with her suggestion and names Fourth Prince as the Crown Prince. Feeling weak and chasing his youth, the Emperor starts spending more and more time with his youngest wives. Lan Yi is making use of Ling Rong's aphrodisiac as well as some other drugs to give the Emperor short bouts of energy and lust that leave him feeling drained afterwards. Eventually, it gets to be too much and the Emperor ends up bedridden for a while. Six months later, he's still very weak. As Su Peisheng helps him walk about the garden, he runs into Six Prince and Jing Xian and Guo Wang's son, Yuan Che. Yu Rao innocently says, Oh shit. Oh shit. So really, these two have the same father, so I guess they would look alike since they're half brothers and not cousins. And it looks like the Emperor is finally putting it together. Thanks for nothing, Yu Rao. Just kidding. I love you two so much. I hope you're happy. The Emperor has another attack that leaves him bedridden once again. Now very suspicious, he calls his trusted spy guy and tells him he's not sure if Six Prince is his. He tells him to lay low and investigate. Spy Guy sneaks into Six Prince's room and takes some of his blood, meaning to do a blood test so the Emperor can be sure that he is his son. He's spotted by Lan Yi. When Jin Huan returns, Lan Yi tells her what she saw, and Jin Huan tells her the truth about her twins. Lan Yi is so shocked and grateful to hear that there is still a part of Guo Wang left in this world that she can barely contain herself. She tells Jin Huan to take good care of the twins, and it's clear she has something in mind. Now knowing the Emperor is suspicious of her, Jin Huan has servants capture the Emperor's spy guy and kill him before he can bring Six Prince's blood back to the Emperor. Meanwhile, Lan Yi goes to see the Emperor. She puts something in his mouth and he's so out of it that he just drinks, assuming it's medicine. Jin Huan joins them and with a very small nod, Lan Yi confirms that the deed is done. The death of Guo Wang remains the saddest star-crossed lovers ending on my list. It's so beautifully done. They were both sure that they would be dead by the end of the night, so they were just completely honest and open with each other. And they did so well seeding the Emperor's jealousy of Guo Wang. So well. From the first episode, from the first moment they met, Guo Wang has always been a factor in their relationship. And I really appreciate the attention to detail the writers had in making the Emperor's insecurity such a big influence in his decision making. Every step that led up to this, even while frustrating, made perfect sense, and not a lot of dramas can say that. After Guo Wang dies, Jun Huan says to herself that the twins are his, and I wonder if that would have been nice for him to know, or would that only have made things worse? Or I think he might have already figured it out. One really interesting aspect to his character that I don't really see talked about is how little he seems to care about his children. Take his son, for example. Yes, he was the product of a forced marriage between him and Jing Xian, but he was still his son. You'd think he would have grown to love him as a parent, but it seems like compared to his love for Jun Huan, nothing else even comes close. He didn't spare a thought for Yuan Che when he went running after Jun Huan, even knowing that the Emperor has been known to punish children in retaliation. And he didn't mention him once when he was dying. I mean, he didn't mention Huan Bi either, but that's to be expected. In any case, now that he's dead, I am loving this whole Charlie's Angels thing Lan Yi and Jun Huan have got going on, both trying to get revenge on the Emperor for killing the man they love. The end is near. Till next time, thanks for watching.